mini skirt on, take my body and glitter. Pop, pop, form sneakers, all the boys want a picture. Two, two, four cars, I make it look rich. Save your breath, baby, I'm not going home with y'all. This is London, one of the most coveted cities of our time, the valuable capital of England and the United Kingdom. Today, this city known to everyone got its name from the Roman Empire, and the name Londonium, which has been inherited from that era, means flowing river. London, with its approximately 2,000-year history, has always been a city of monarchs and great individuals. So much so that historical figures like King Henry VII, Queen Elizabeth I and Queen Victoria, who left their mark on England, lived in London. Even today, the concept of monarchy still exists in the country. The kings and queens of England reside in Buckingham Palace, in London and even a certain part of the palace is open to the public for visits. The fact that the city has hosted such great names undoubtedly played a role in London's leadership in various fields, including industry, finance, music and football since the imperial era. London has attracted immigrants from all over the world over time and, for many of us, it is a city we dream of seeing and living in. Nowadays, London, with its more than 300 languages spoken, is a perfect cultural melting pot. For example, if you are Chinese, you can live in the city's Chinatown. Or are you French? Finding a French restaurant there won't take more than half an hour. London is built on a small area of 1572 square kilometers, and yet it houses a population of 9 million people, making it a crowded place. It has surpassed cities with similar populations to such an extent that the next most populous cities are Birmingham with 3 million and Manchester with over 2.5 million residents. Let's take a closer look at the city's geography to analyze it more clearly. As you can see, London is located in the southern regions of the United Kingdom, even in the southeast of the kingdom. The city is positioned in such a beautiful area that unlike cities further north like Manchester and Liverpool, it offers warmer weather and more attractive opportunities for reaching European countries. Similar to Moscow, London has a circular arrangement. Just like in Moscow, there is a wide river flowing through the city. This river is called the Thames River, and it has a structure that stretches from the east to the west of London for 50 kilometers. Since the river divides the city into two in its middle, various bridges have been constructed to connect the city. One of the most well-known among them is the Tower Bridge. Notice that, good or bad, a river flows through the most beautiful cities in the world. Cities are built on wetlands, providing both production opportunities and transforming the city into a lush green area. Here's one of its proofs. Look, these are different areas of London. In each part of the city, there are large and beautiful parks. These parks not only provide a visual feast for the people there, but also allow them to relieve the stress of daily life with their loved ones. Richmond Park, the Regent's Park, Hyde Park, and dozens of other magnificent green areas in the city fascinate those who go there. Today, people want to move to places like London, not only for job opportunities, but also to migrate to natural settlements like these which increase prosperity. In conclusion, apart from the river that flows into the sea, London doesn't actually have a sea, contrary to what many people believe. Most people assume it has a coastline directly on the English Channel. If you're in England and want to go to the beach, you'll need to head east of London to places like Southend. Alternatively, you can go to other warm alternatives like Brighton, which is a favorite among the locals. Cities on the northern border of the country with access to the sea are not popular choices for beachgoers because as you head north in the UK, the weather gets colder and the climate becomes rainier. British folks are well aware of this and since they earn one of the world's most valuable currencies, they prefer not to spend much time on their own cold, murky, sea-colored beaches. During the summer, they travel to Mediterranean countries and spend their pounds freely as they not only possess one of the world's most valuable currencies, but also one of the world's most powerful passports. Today, the UK passport shares the fourth spot on the list of the world's most valuable passports, alongside countries like Denmark and the Netherlands. In the list of the most valuable currencies, they rank fifth. However, one thing is certain. London is separated from cities in Europe like the Netherlands, Belgium and France only by the English Channel. 
The fact that there's nothing more than the English Channel between these two points is truly fantastic. Whether you want to travel by plane or by ship between these two points, the options are wonderful. Their status as an island nation should not make you think they live in isolation from the rest of the world. Indeed, the United Kingdom is truly an island nation, and together with London it continues to be one of the most livable cities in the world. One of the significant advantages of London being the capital of an island is that the country has no land borders to worry about securing. Moreover, the constituent nations of the kingdom, like Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, share similar origins and cultures and have become integrated into a cohesive whole. So, those who wish to travel to this city from foreign countries must do so by plane or train, excluding sea routes. Don't think about how one could go to an island nation by train. Technology has advanced significantly, and there are now tunnels and train networks connecting London to other European countries passing beneath the English Channel. People can board high-speed Eurostar trains from places like France and Belgium and reach London in just a few short hours. On the other hand, because the country is situated in such a safe geographic location, the architecture you'll see in the UK has remained robust and preserved its grandeur for hundreds of years. For instance, one of the most well-known is the Westminster Palace. You've probably seen this palace many times in various places. It's one of London's most iconic symbols closely associated with the city itself. Much like the Eiffel Tower is to Paris. This grand palace is home to the British Parliament. Let's say you're visiting London for a short period and don't have time to get to know the culture and people. If you're short on time for meeting people, you can dare to visit and even ride inside the London Eye, the tallest Ferris wheel in Europe. This place not only offers a Ferris wheel experience, but also provides a visual spectacle with games and light shows to entertain visitors. Another notable spot in the city is Trafalgar Square, one of the busiest places. Here, you can observe the daily life of Londoners by sitting in a cafe and capture unforgettable photographs in the square. Speaking of photographs, those famous telephone booths are one of the iconic symbols of England and London. Now hold on tight, because it's time to take a peek into the lives of Londoners. First and foremost, when you're strolling through the streets of London, you'll notice plenty of beautiful cars. However, when you look closely, something else might strike you as peculiar. If you've ventured to London or the UK without doing your research, you'll quickly realize that traffic flows on the left side and the steering wheels of cars are on the right side. For someone new to the UK, driving like this might seem challenging, but you'll surely get used to it over time. Besides, the city covers a relatively small area and you might not even need a car because London boasts one of the world's most advanced metro systems. You can travel from one end of the city to the other without using any other mode of transport. The metro fare is around two pounds and it's well worth it for the convenience it offers. If you're in the mood to visit London and channel your inner Sherlock Holmes, wanting to immerse yourself in some mystery, you can certainly hop into those famous black cabs. The British are so skilled at marketing their distinctive items to the world that even these iconic black taxis and telephone booths entice people to this city. The British have also done a remarkable job promoting the English breakfast to the world, and it's something everyone tries when they come here. An English breakfast typically includes fried tomatoes, baked beans, mushrooms, scrambled or sunny-side-up eggs, and their beloved bacon. You can find variations of this plate at every cafe in London, and you can request a bacon-free version if you prefer. With this breakfast, they enjoy a cup of English tea and they pour as much milk as they like into their black tea. Another thing that will catch your attention as you wander through London especially as we approach the end of summer, is that people are carrying umbrellas with them. People living here in London and other regions of England have to be accustomed to rainfall and they shouldn't be bothered by it. Rainfall and overcast weather are part of England's geographical destiny so it can rain in the city at any unexpected moment. That's why people in London always carry umbrellas during the autumn and winter months. Setting aside the matter of rain, it can be said that the city architecture in London is more unique compared to European countries. For instance, if you travel to a handful of countries on the European continent, you'll notice that most of them have similar architectural styles in their squares and streets. However, England and London are more distinctive in this regard. 
Stone castle-style buildings are the most prominent indicator of this. London's buildings don't have very vibrant colours. Apartments and structures are generally in shades of grey and cream. Office buildings and low-rise structures with shops have a creamy reddish tone. The city council must be doing a good job because the parks are spotless and you won't see any trash in the main squares. Of course, this situation also has a lot to do with the level of education and civility of the society. At night, the city's ambience resembles a film set even more. After a certain hour, the streets give way to the silence of the lights and the wet asphalt beneath you makes you feel like you're on the set of a BBC production. Don't ever think that there's a dull life in London. Here you can find all sorts of social activities in iconic areas from cheese festivals to vegetable markets and sandwich parties, everything that can make a person happy. Especially if you visit the market set up around London Bridge, you'll understand what I mean. People's fashion styles are quite diverse. While some have already put on their thick coats and jackets these days, others are still walking around in sleeveless tops. Amidst the grey and white tones of the city, you'll occasionally come across sculptures that harmonise with London's motives. Street musicians, as is the case in the capitals of many developed countries, add a touch of joy to London. The real life in the city begins after work hours. The crowds of people aged 18 to 50 who fill every venue to the brim spill out into London's bar streets and people in their stylish attire queue up. There is a significant presence of people of African and Arab descent, and these individuals seem more like naturalized British citizens than tourists. It seems like this city has welcomed a great number of immigrants, my friends. Moreover, in comparison to Moscow, there is an even greater diversity of people here. The lighting in the areas where the venues are located is excellent, and everyone seems to have their own social circle. People here tend to have more robust body types, both women and men have a sturdy and fuller appearance. I guess this is a reflection of London and England consuming a lot of fatty foods and indulging in belly-filling drinks. It must also be said that the women in London and Manchester are truly dazzling. People are really well-groomed here and there are many single people around. If you are a well-groomed person and can speak English well, you can easily find friends who like to hang out at nights in London. Especially after 12 at night, People light up the streets with their most beautiful clothes. All the women look like models and you are fascinated when you look at them. If you think I'm exaggerating, you can watch these views with your own eyes. This place may contain the liveliest and most dazzling people in Europe. In this sense, if going to Moscow seems too far for you, you do not need to go far to find beautiful women and handsome men. London and Manchester offer you everything you are looking for. While wandering the streets of London, you'll often come across elderly people. In fact, surveys about the city's age distribution indicate an average age of 37.5. However, people seem comfortable and full of life regardless of their age. There are millions of people worldwide who dream of being in their shoes and living in London. For instance, the minimum hourly wage for someone living in London is £10.4. This translates to a monthly income of around £1,700. When taxes are deducted, the minimum wage for those working in London drops to around £13.30. Moreover, even people in the same profession can fall into different pay brackets based on their age. But if you're building a career in a specialised field, you can easily earn over £3,000 per month in London. However, I must sadly note that the price of a nice house in London exceeds £2,000 per month. This means that to live comfortably there, you would need to allocate £4,000 per month to cover your housing costs. In this video, we've tried to provide a geographical and lifestyle overview of London. If you'd like to see more videos about important places in other countries, you can like our London video, subscribe to our channel for free, and even become a channel member to provide us with more support. Goodbye!